Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's an honor to be here with my mentors and teachers from Riyadh, and welcome everybody else. So uh, our talk is about neurological deficit in thoracic OPLL. This is the outline. We will start with definition. It's a disease in which the posterior longitudinal ligament is chronically ossified at various vertebral levels. It's sometimes combined with the suffocation of other ligaments like the ligamentum flavum, especially in the thoracic spine. Epidemiology, according to the Japan's National Registry, as it's more common in Asian population. We can detect it by CT in three to six percent of Asian individuals. The incidence of symptomatic OPL less than one hundredth of the radiologically detected. It's well uh, known cause of myelopathy in East uh, Asian population and prevalence of OPLL in Japan, especially high at rate of 1.9 to 4.3 percent. Twice incidence in men than women. The peak onset of symptoms in the sixth decade. Some criteria in patients of OPLL as diabetes and high BMD. Differences between cervical and thoracic OPLL. Thoracic OPLL is less common than the cervical one. The earlier onset of, of presentation due to multiple causes, more incidence in female rather than the, in, con in contrast to the cervical OPLL, which is more common in males. Obesity is a risk factor in both, but we can find that associated with more high BMI, like 30.4 kilograms, more ossification of sp other spinal ligaments, like the ligamentum flavum, more severe symptoms of myelopathy due to narrow canal and the, the blood supply of the thoracic spine, as we all know, and inability uh, uh, to the core to withstand much compression. Surgical management of thoracic OPLL. Thoracic spine has less range of motion, as we know, than the cervical spine due to rigid connection to the thoracic cage, the uh, narrower canal, so there is a very limited role of conservative treatment regarding myelopathy results from thoracic OPLL. The aim of the surgery, to decompress and to stabilize the, the, the thoracic spine. Surgical methods for thoracic OPLL. We have the anterior approach, decompression and stabilization, longitudinal splitting uh, of the sternum if it's high, T1 to T3, the thoracotomy, T4 to T12, anterior decompression under microscopy. The posterior one, we have the laminectomy with pedicular fixation, laminoplasty, circumferential decompression and fixation, Otsuka method, Stage decompression and fixation Suzuki method. Combined anterior and posterior the tomita. There is no in this study showed the, there is no significant difference in outcome in regard to surgical approach. However, patients with instrumented fusion has better outcome as there is decreased incidence of post-operative kyphosis. Surgical challenges in thoracic OPLL. As we all know, the blood supply is a watershed area in the thoracic spine. Here we can go through the vascular anatomy of the spine, the thoracic one, as we all know. So the thoracic spinal cord uh, is a watershed area of spine circulation in which it's vulnerable to intraoperative ischemic damage, not only because of the pathology. The spine alignment. The presence of surgical kyphosis in upper and middle thoracic spine may compromise the, the beneficial effect of decompression alone due to cord shifting anterior and further be com compressed by the OPLL. Progression of thoracic kyphosis may occur by positioning of the patient during surgery or by non-instrumented posterior decompression. So this picture, we can see how to de or decrease the kyphosis at the decompression level 
with our instrumentation. Another challenge of the surgery in thoracic OPLL, it's association between the OPLL and ossified ligamentum flavum and severe myelopathy when both occurs at the same level with cord compression anterior and posterior. Increased risk of post-operative neurological deficit, especially in lamin laminectomy done without instrumentation due to affection of spine stability and the progressive kyphosis and compression by OPLL anteriorly. If one stage circumferential decompression is done, longer operative time and high amount of intraoperative and postoperative bleeding that causes cord ischemia or postoperative hematoma and cord compression. So we will go for posterior decompression and fusion. Another challenge is the type affect the outcome surgery is the beak type OPLL. I call it the thoracic monster. The beak type OPLL suggests a presence of segmental mobility and may be a potential risk factor for severe neurological symptoms and worsening of myelopathy during surgery in thoracic OPLL. Rather than the continuous one, the beak type, we can find multiple segmental mobility at levels. Causes of post-operative neurological deficit and how to avoid. This study by Shiro showed uh, the reported incidence of post-operative neurological deficit complication, thoracic OPLL surgery up to one third. So we have anatomical, pathological, and surgical related causes of post-operative neurological deficit in OPLL surgeries. Anatomical causes of, for post-operative neurological deficit, the blood supply, the narrow spinal canal, and the small range of motion. The pathological causes. This study showed selective angiography to detect anterior spinal artery stenosis in thoracic ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament. And it showed that all patient was studied, they have uh, anterior spinal artery stenosis due to the direct, we will, we will see the, the causes. This is the preoperative angiography shows the stenosis of AKA and the anterior spinal artery. Possible causes of impaired anterior spinal artery blood flow thoracic, it's a direct compression by the OPLL. It's the anterior uh, radical medullary artery occlusion or it's intravascular pathology. Regardless of the cause, the ASA stenosis is, is frequently occur in thoracic OPLL. The previous study showed all patients with thoracic OPLL beak type, they have ASA stenosis. So this study showed the prostaglandin E1 might improve spinal cord blood flow in thoracic OPLL decompression surgery while maintaining adequate blood pressure. The beak type of OPLL. This study showed that the beak type uh, has a higher association with neurological deterioration than flat type the incidence of beak type is more in thoracic than the cervical OPLL. Surgical outcome ossification of posterior longitudinal ligament of the thoracic spine in the beak type OPLL, subtle alteration in the spinal alignment during posterior decompression procedures may increase the spinal cord compression leading to the deterioration of the neurology as mentioned by this study. So we have to be careful of the kyphosis during the surgery. Minimal increase in kyphosis may cause more damage. Options to decrease post-operative neurological deficit in the beak type, avoid non-instrumented decompression in the beak type. Resection of the beak type OPLL can decrease the incidence of post-operative neurological deficit, the circumferential decompression. So this study describes the, circumfer the circumferential decompression that we will do our posterior laminectomy and instrumentation first, then we will bear under it and keep it, the, keep the floating attached one to the dura. 
So use of ultrasonic osteotome could decrease the neural injury during the resection as mentioned by this study. Here is a picture of ultrasonic bear. Association of OPLL with ossified ligamentum flavin. Compression of the cord anteriorly by the OPLL and posterior by ossified longitudinal ligament. Options to decrease post-operative neurological deficit associated with the ossified ligamentum flavum. Avoid uninstrumented decompression. So instrument first, put your rods, then do your decompression. Consider circumferential decompression as mentioned. Either one or two stage surgery. The surgical related causes for post neurological de post surgical deficit. This study uh, showed the aim to maintain mean arterial pressure between 70 and 100, around 85, to, to maintain blood perfusion during the surgery. The manipulation of the cord should be very meticulous. The adhesion between the dura and the OPLL can result in a dural tear and further blood supply deterioration or decrease. Using intraoperative neuromonitoring is one option that we can decrease the postoperative neurological deficit, as mentioned in this study. Incidence of neurological damage can be lowered with use of intraoperative neuromonitoring and transcranial motor evoked potential. Around 52% of cases can be res rescued from postoperative neurological deficit with using intraoperative neuromonitoring because you are detecting any ischemic or any deterioration early and you can deal with it. Postoperative kyphosis progression. Progression of thoracic kyphosis can occur after uninstrumented decompression as the thoracic area is kyphotic and causing gradual postoperative neurological deficit. The biomechanical studies proves that instrumented fusion with decompression decrease the progression of postoperative kyphosis. So the ossification kyphosis angle. As the angle formed by the line connecting the most cranial vertebral body of the decompression site to the maximum prominence of the OPLL and the most caudal vertebral body of the decompression site to the maximum prominence of the OPLL in sagittal MRI. This study showed the aim is to set the angle less than 23 degrees to decrease the incidence of postoperative neurological deficit. And here we can see an eco free space between the OPLL and anterior portion of the spinal cord can be determined from an intraoperative ultrasound. Positive eco free space is good indicator for adequate decompression and we can find it more with if we decrease the angle less than 23 degrees. The ossification kyphosis angle. Other causes, prolonged surgery, postoperative hematoma, pedicular screw malpositioning. So, conclusion, the surgical management of thoracic OPLL is challenging even for experienced spine surgeons, however incidence. High incidence of postoperative neurological deficit due to the nature of vascularity of the cord at the thoracic spine and the kyphotic alignment of the thoracic spine technical options that can decrease the incidence of postoperative neurological deficit includes keeping the cord perfusion during surgery, high map, good surgical techniques, and manipulation of the cord using the intraoperative neuro monitoring. Avoid an instrumented decompression to avoid progression of the kyphosis. Even minimal increase in the kyphosis can cause a severe damage. The kyphosis and sitting of the uh, ossified kyphosis angle, less than 23 degrees intraoperative, can be used to assess adequ uh, adequacy of posterior decompression. Certain surgical techniques can be considered in some situations 
as in big type of OPL associated with ossified ligamentum flavum as circumferential decompression. Use of ultrasonic osteotome could decrease neural injury during resection of the beak type. Preoperative selective angiography is important due to associating with stenosis with SA. We have the prostaglandin E1. It may help. And thank you.